Probably keep this. Got deck tech for Juicy. Using those freshly gambled on uh, channel points, I imagine. Pioneer Adventures. Yeah, okay, that's just kind of interesting. Lucky Clover is like an incredibly, incredibly powerful card that nobody's casting in Pioneer. I, I've been talking about this a little bit, but I, I do think like for your Pioneer brews, trying to find like these super powerful standard cards that nobody's playing with, really important. Like, um, so I, I like I like the idea of doing this. This does look like it's just like a, almost exactly standard, standard adventures though, right? This is just exa this there's this is like actual no changes from the standard deck, right? And so I, you're just saying spike. Go ahead, turn my standard deck into a pioneer deck, baby. I could try. <laughs> I don't know what to do exactly, though. It does seem kind of tricky. Um, I feel like I wouldn't play Questing Beast. Escape to the Wilds is quite strong, but I feel like you maybe have enough top end. I'd like to see some more cheap interaction, potentially some answer for Winota. Although I don't know what good answers for Winota you really have access to in a deck like this. Um, uh oh, this is a, this is the turn four. Oh, they have nothing to do with Omnath mana. That's really lucky for us. Third Anvil for me is lucky too. Yeah, I think I'd like to see, like, main deck Spell Pierce, and I, I don't really, I don't know besides Brazen Borrower what can answer Winota. Oh, you should play four Brazen Borrower. That's, an, it's an easy four Brazen Borrower. Cut the Questing Beast, two Brazen Borrowers, cut the Escape to the Wilds. Play three more interactive spells. Alright. A lot of lands. Um... And as far as the sideboard goes, like, you've also just, like, played only... These are only <laughs> targets from Standard. There's lots of good options you have access to. You need an... Out, you, you have the Alpine Moon, I see. Okay, maybe this is not just the Standard deck. I would play a, one Pithy Needle over the second Alpine Moon, probably. Those one mana cards off, off uh, Fave Wishes are really important, I think. Okay, let me sack a Construct to the Oven... Aether Gust. Gust is, yeah, Gust is a good option, too. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know that you need, like, the entire sideboard to be phased sideboard cards, either. Not that that's necessarily what you're doing, but... The Fae of Wishes sideboard just takes a lot, a lot of time looking at, like, literally every single Pioneer legal option and trying to figure it out. Is Rin the most symbol in Planeswalker? The most symbol in Planeswalker has got to be Sor and Lord of Innistrad. Oh, yeah, Tybalt. Yeah, Tybalt and emblems every single time it enters. Although Soren sometimes gets two emblems. Yeah, three mana Gideon. More, yeah, three mana Gideon is pretty likely too. So they are they are just guys to see. I wasn't one hundred percent sure. When they cast this Omnath. Probably a bad matchup. Jace the Mind Sculptor was played. Yeah, there's no emblem on Jace the Mind Sculptor. If I had to ground out one Pyre deck to win a trophy race, which I choose, probably this one right now. Maybe Lotus Field. <laughs> My opponent's at 29. I think I'll sack one treasure here, I guess. It's a pretty good draw. <laughs> Not a good hit. Another look though. Sorry, I thought I was yielding. Stop yielding. Always yield. Always yield. Always yield. What are the chances we get to untap next turn? <laughs> Seems low. Any chance for Vampire Pox? The Vampire Pox fans, I love them. I love, I love how much you guys still <laughs> spike. Please, Vampire Pox. But no, I'm not that likely to play it anytime soon, to be honest. 
Uh, they, they're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> You're good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna bring in the duresses. This this matchup is probably pretty tough. Let me go down cat oven since this is you know maybe a little bit faster. Trim a dispute too. Don't think we want moon. Don't think we want lantern. Lantern is not terrible, but I'm just gonna click submit. There is, is there really no deck built on Omnath 3? If we just did an awesome deck tech for like a deck playing those cards and playing Grinning Ingus and Bergy. Infinite Risen Reef Triggers. What's up? It's me, your friend Aspiring Spike. What's up? It's me, your friend Aspiring Spike. What's up? It's me, your friend Aspiring Spike. <laughs> Every time I leave the meet your friend aspiring spikes, I can hear them even without hearing them. <laughs> and then every time I'm like, I'm gonna turn that stupid thing off, and I never ever do. Um Okay, how are we how are we playing this hand? I think I'm gonna keep this and put back synthesizer. Yeah, it's a good bet. I why we concede? My, my opponent has like literally any non-creature spell in that game, and in their hand we lose. If they, I, I, and they, they also get to loot too. But like, it's like almost impossible for them to fizzle. But it's millions of clicks that I don't feel like sitting through. It was I was saving myself psychic damage. You know, people don't talk about psychic damage enough, but it can be really dangerous to sit and just. Like, when you're, like, less than 1% to survive on a turn. But I have less than a percent to survive. Maybe, maybe I'll, it'll be here. But you're getting psychic damage. All your viewers are taking psychic damage. It's just not worth it. It is, it is just not worth it to take all the psychic damage. You know what I, you know what I would rather take than a thousand psychic damage? An L. <laughs> would rather take an L. <laughs> We're just in a league, it's okay, you know. Yeah, I, think, I agree this matchup does seem bad. That being said, we may be able to race. I mean, and this is also like a big part of the reason why I like the Shrapnel Blasts, is they make you so much faster in the combo matchups, which I think is really relevant. Probably stack a blood token in the turn. Also have the blast up here. Maybe blast an Omnath in response to the ETB. You know, it's 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 also kind of easy, right? Like we're just playing a league. We're in round one of the league. It's pretty easy concede there. If it's a PTQ or a challenge, you don't concede <laughs> and you play it out, right? You take the psychic damage. It's not a it's not a PTQ or a legal. Take the L. Might be taking the L here. How much psychic AP, HP do you have? Not very much. <laughs> Not very much, I think. This card's an Ascendancy. We know they still have a March of Otherworldly Light. I don't think we know any of their cards. No, against, at least against like Lotus Field, we've got some more... And Winona, we've got more Cyber cards. Don't have many Cyber cards for Ascendancy. This, this is actually a good argument for playing... Um, we're playing Damping Sphere over Damping Sphere over uh, uh, Alpine Moon because of this matchup, but I, I do think Damping Sphere does hurt you a lot. Is why, is why I'm not playing it. Can we just attack first? Yeah, we've talked about Ob. I pro I promise. I promise when the new set comes out, I will have a I will have a list with Ob. I just don't have it yet. Thoughts attack with Din. Need to keep a blast. Yeah, we need to blast this turn. They're targeting the blood token. Let them loot, I guess. I didn't think I don't think they can kill I mean maybe they can just draw two more instants and kill the, the mayhem devil. Okay. 
So close to killing them. Oh, Thoughtseize maybe buys me the turn. It's a great draw. Kind of makes me regret attacking. Okay. So this is... So I can go Shrapnel Blast, sack the Treasure Token, or sack the Oven. Six, seven damage. Doesn't sound like lethal to me. Okay, I'm not 0% against the Awakening. I am, I think, 0% against the Cruise. I think both cards are really likely to kill me, though, on this board. Well, they, they, we 5 would with this deck before this. We're probably dead to this. We're very likely to die to the Awakening. I have 7 damage. They need to draw something. Yeah, they need to draw something, but they get they get the loot off the Awakening, and so it's like, if they just draw any non-creature spell, then in, like, the top two looks, we're dead, I think. Or, like, or, or like you know, maybe some non-creature spells, they just get one more look, right? But it's just, they, they have so much mana when they go off with Awakening. They have nothing! They have nothing. I can't blast here though, right? Wow, Anvil I think gets the job done, actually. So we can go Anvil. Sack treasure token for mana. Trigger Anvil, trigger Devil. Sack here. Back here. Exaxes, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Just keeping it fancy. Just keeping it fancy. Easy game, actually. Cashing in? Hell yeah. You want to be you want it to be VIP, right? Just want to confirm real quick. Welcome to the uh, team blitz. Just confirm VIP. I'll click enter. Gotta keep this. Yeah, it is crazy to me people aren't playing blast in this list. Yeah, no worries, blitz. It's probably actually better to play Epicur on turn one. Because I can't hit carry it anyways. It's like I kinda feel like I kinda feel like the Meat Hook Massacres make your good matchups better and Shrapnel Blast makes your bad matchups better and usually I feel like it's pretty easy calls when that that's the decision point. Opponent's hand is great. What else would Damping Sphere be setting other than Lotus and Ascend? Um, nothing, really, I think. Some people like it against Phoenix, though. It could be good against Phoenix. I don't think it is, though. Or, at the very least, I think it hurts you too much. Because you, like, basically always want to, like, double, triple spell with this deck. And that's why I don't like the Damping Spheres. Uh, but if Lotus Field ends up being really common, then maybe we can play Damping Sphere. But they, they also have, like, millions of answers to it, I guess. That's a, a problem, right? Uh, I should, I think, Duress here, they're just kind of likely to have found an Ascendancy at this point. Okay, no Ascendancy. They do have two freaking Omnaths. <laughs> Scary stuff. Um, am I, I don't think I'm sucking a Blood Token end of turn. Kind of want to wait till I have the Mayhem Devil in play. Their hand is Omnath, Omnath, March of Otherworldly Light. Would you want Go Blink for Lotus in this deck? Uh, yeah, you, you, that's an option. I, I don't know if it's the best option, but I, I like the thought. I like the thought a lot. Interesting draw. Are they marching a Epicur? Love that. Um, 
I don't think I'm playing this land here. Because I think I need to save it for the tokens. Mm. Damping Sphere messes up Nykthos. It's almost never worth it to bring in Damping Sphere against uh, green, Mono Green, I think. Mono Green is, like, is a deck that is just, like... They're just thrilled when you take a turn off against them. They'll just tap the Lotus, the Nykthos for one mana. And ramp with their other ramp spells. So hopefully they hopefully no Omnath into <laughs> Fabled Passage here. Rally the Ancestors question mark. Brew one of those up yet? Not really. Uh there could be something there. I know there used to be that deck used to exist, used to play Luris. I don't know. Uh, okay, I guess we're gonna try to kill the Omnath here. It's obviously like kinda awkward because we know they have a second one, but it does let me attack for a bunch. Maybe we'll find a thought seize. Nope. Deck for seven. And his Omnath th four mystery cards after the draw. Oh, it's Pioneer. Oh, it's Magus of the Moon, Sag. <laughs> How's that feel? All right. Hope we can find something to sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. Snap blocks, wow. I guess they have another one. <laughs> oh no they don't. No they don't. Sorry, that was the one I didn't cl click off. Exiles Treasure Cruise. If I wasn't so toxic, I probably would have lost this. Uh, I probably would have won this game. Yeah, I think I am going to. I am going to a pre-release. Channel Fireball wants me to write an article about about it. <laughs> I'm excited. It's a pretty good draw. Um, let's go attack first. Could maybe actually kill them if I find Shrapnel Blast. I have four Shrapnel Blasts in the deck. So they have a march. Looks like they're excelling a white card, killing my Mayhem Devil. So I don't think we can find Shrapnel Blast to win. That being said, Deadly Dispute still like was easily the best draw here. We draw kind of a pain. <laughs> you know, I don't know how good this thought sees is. We're casting it. Taking the ascendancy. <laughs> <laughs> Stay hanging alive somehow. I don't know, man. I don't know how we're still in this. General opinion: New campaign hasn't excited at all. Besides new triumphs and optics list, there's plenty of cards I'm excited about. I don't know. I mean, this happens like literally every single set. Like I, I have people in my chat saying, "Spike, this set seems like the most underpowered set ever." They've said that again about like literally every single set I've ever streamed while these sets have come out, including Throne of Eldraine. <laughs> So I've had people say that about Throne of Eldraine. Um, I think there's lots of cool, exciting, exciting cards to be excited for. I've got lots of brews on my mind. And you can tune in after the release and maybe maybe your mind will be changed. What, MH2? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I had anybody say MH2 was underpowered. I, I maybe had some people say like they didn't think it was going to be that impactful. I don't know. It's, it's kind of tough because I get just like every opinion you could ever imagine. <laughs> Every opinion ever you could ever imagine is stated. <laughs> um, uh, I, there are definitely some wrong opinions on cards in Image Two. Just got PS Five. Should I get Lord of the Ring? There's a, I didn't know there was a Lord of the Ring game for the PS Five. I haven't I haven't played PS Five in a long time. I'm actually gonna pack it up uh, today or tomorrow for the uh, move. All right, they revealed a Sylvan Awakening. Doesn't do that much without Ascendancy. I, I am doing an in-person pre-release. I don't know where though. What is happening this game? How are we alive? We're just so freaking whitelisted. Never mind, we're not whitelisted. Judge. 
Which trigger resolves first? Which trigger resolves first on the implement? The one damage, if I, if I spin a mana, sacrifice it, does the draw card resolve first or the one damage? The draw does? Okay. So I have to pass. Can attack with the Giganta, I guess. Wait, no, we're we just, we're just dead to Sylvan Awakening. Three mana, eight damage. Oh, not dead. Mm -hmm. I guess I should attack. Because if they block, that's one less token they're attacking with. They're one less land they're attacking with anyways. Three. Oh, sorry. Three. Or five, ten. Oh, no, I am dead. I was dead either way. Hmm. Like, I think that the factions were good when, like, they were, like, when there wasn't names for color combinations, right? Like, the, the guilds. I got the guilds on my shirt right now. The guilds of Ravnica are super iconic. Those were great things to make factions of. Um, the cons of Tarkir block, giving names to those color combinations were great. The, the shards, Naya, Esper were great. But it's just, I think that, I think that they realize that, like, you know... That, that was really successful, right? Oh, I'm a Rakdos mage. Hell yeah, I'm going to uh, kill you. I'm a Gruul player. I'm going to, you know, I'm big Gruul smash. Like, they realized that that was really successful, right? Um, but, but, I don't, I think it's too much. I think they're doing too much uh, with the, like, the tribe kind of stuff. I think, I think that it doesn't work to do it every single every single set i think it's better to um i think it's better to like just kind of have the flavor be there and like like not have to get super invested in like you know what was what were those those like young adult movie books with the dumb names and like you had to like you you were like a variant and you had to like figure out which variants you were or something i don't know <laughs> i got dragged to them <laughs> dragged to it um, I don't know. I, I, just something I was thinking. I, I think it's a mistake for them to do it for, like, so many sets. Like, I, I think that this set in particular would be, like, a lot better if it wasn't, like, super faction-based. I, I think I would enjoy it a lot more if this set just had, like, more flavor. I didn't have to learn the names of the families. We saw some, like, interesting interactions. Um, but I'm also, like, a big dummy who has, you know, overly opinionated opinions for no reason. Diversion, yes, that's the name of it, yeah. You don't want to try to draw a push on their turn with Implement? Uh, I didn't have push in my deck. I guess I could draw a Shrapnel Blast, though. And so, like, and, you know, it's not. A, it's obviously not a big deal, right? Bar class is really cool. It's obviously not a big deal. Who cares, right? I, but I will say, I think that it's, it, if Wizards keeps doing this, if they keep just making, like, every set have, like, different factions, you pick a faction, and that's, like, your identity, it, it just becomes a bit too much to keep up with, in my opinion. I think, I think it's probably going to be better off if they move away from that a little bit. What a turn. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> okay, so these trade with each other. I guess I will kill the Domri... Just kind of talking out loud, you know. Factions are really forced. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's. I think that's a good word for it. Like they understand that the the whole factions thing is, like, has been popular in the past, and like they just it feels like a really formulaic way to like give the set some flavor, but I just, I don't think it worked for this set. I, I really don't think it worked for this set, if I just had to give a critique. So that feels fine. Obviously not a huge deal, but that's, that's, if I, if I was in charge, that's what I would, um, that's the feedback I would give. <clears throat> Whenever you cast a legendary spell, XL top two cards of your library, you may play them this turn. Well, too bad my opponent is not getting a next turn. To be fair, MTG lore is cringe in general. Yeah, I mean, you. yes, I agree. That being said, there are actually people who are really into it. 
Um, like some of my best, some of my best friends love the MTG lore. I, I, I don't. Um, I appreciate that it's there. Like it is a nice like backdrop to enjoy the game in. Uh, I, but I, I couldn't really care less about the lore personally. And I think, I think a lot of you know us, you know, spike-minded players, competitive players, are think that way. But some people really like it, and that's obviously what's great about Magic is we all enjoy different aspects of the game, and. Um, we get to come together and uh, complain about it together. <laughs> we get to come together and complain. Isn't it beautiful? Play 3-3, three, three, Stratma Blast Dispute. The opponent's deck is really cool, I like it. <laughs> Name all the Akora factions right now. <laughs> I only I only know them because of the triumphs, but it's like Rogren, Katria, and Dantha. Next, maybe I don't know them. I don't know I, Zagoth. And there's one more, the Mardu one. I don't know. And it's also like I don't know like what the flavor of any of these factions are either. Zinon, that sounds made up. Survive, survive, survive. Sure, thoughts he's Bard class, maybe. Gallia, Oath of Chandra. Another card seems very scary. I guess I'll take the Gallia. Oath of Chandra just seems so bad in this matchup. They even kind of did it in Kaladesh, or not Kaladesh, sorry. Um, Kamigawa. Right? Because, like, I, they gave me this, like, they gave me this, like, poster, and it's, I know that there's five factions on it. Hold on. This is driving me crazy. Hold on. Okay, I'm kind of, I think I kind of misremembered what this poster was. I think I kind of misremembered it, but... They just, you know, have, they have all the, um, they have all the castles. They have got, like, they've got, like, a section for Takanuma. They've got a section for Monamo, for Shokazan. It, it looks like a nice poster. Yeah, it's just a map. I think I kind of misremembered it. It's just a map. It's not really, it's not really factions. It's just kind of made me, you know, feel, feel like this conversation. I recant my statement. I recant my statement. Uh, I think I'll sack the blood token here and discard the cat. Okay. Try to play Final Lamb Synthesizer. Great success. Don't think that they probably have anything. Oh, they have the Oath of Chandra, so I guess I'll thought seize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind, sorry. I, I kind of I missed. I thought for some reason this map had a bunch of factions on it. And not, not just the castles. The map is also like, pretty sick. I, <laughs> I like it. Just kind of misremembered what was on here. Yeah, yeah, I guess there were some factions there too. <laughs> Everything is factions when you really think about it. This is the problem with the bar class deck. You have to play like Ovia. <laughs> no, it's it's fold. It's already folded. I, I have to pack it up anyways. So I'm just gonna fold it and I'm gonna be, do some more packing tonight, I think. Hit <laughs> your Mocha's command? They have Besage you, okay. Is 
Is the Bard class actually worth it in their deck? I mean, the Bard class is kind of like the only good card of their deck. Their deck is completely built around it. It's kind of like the cards you have to play to make Bard class worth it are really, are really where the deck kind of falls a little bit, I think. So I think Shrapnel Blast is better because it gives you a much better combo matchup, which are your weak matchups. And uh, Shrapnel Blast also lets you play Gigantha as a companion, which has won us like three games already today. <laughs> I played against this player earlier too. I can't remember what they were playing. Onlylands.com. Gigantha. I mean, I'm going to keep this hand. I can't remember what they were playing. The mirror, maybe now. <laughs> yeah, they, I, don't think, I don't think they were playing this earlier. I'm going to play Implement here. What's the best Pioneer deck you've tested for now? I like this one a lot. I also like the... Oh, they cast... I usually don't play Synthesizer in turn two, but they got rewarded. Um, this, this one's been one of them. I, I've also really liked the Mono Red Fires deck. Those have kind of been the top two so far. Plus an ob in the deck. We'll, we'll, I'll try out ob. We'll try out ob when it's released. Not out yet though, obviously. I'll trade cat for epicure if they attack. I have three shadow blasts in my hand. My opponent's at a humble, humble 18 life. Let's fire up the thoughts. They've got one card left. <laughs> so this is, yeah i actually have 17 points of damage in my hand and my opponent's at 18. they have some life gain obviously yeah they're, they're back up at two i think i'll shock so that i can cast one of the blasts I will say, Meat Hook Massacre is very good in the mirror. I think I'll just block here. They're gonna, they're gonna leave these back to block anyways. Just try to keep my life total high. Synthesizer is a great draw. Didn't have the bugbear, not too bad either, I guess. We'll play that, and then we can go Shrapnel Blast, Sacking Blood Token in the turn, and then maybe Dino's Lethal. Hmm. Okay, Anvil means they're gonna get to gain some life. So maybe I Shrapnel Blast the Samurai Token? Seems like a bit of a spew. Maybe it's not a speed. Maybe I'm just dead if I don't, actually. Can block here, block here. Okay. Yeah. Tough, tough game. Wait till you get a Fireblade Charger with Colossus Hammer. Yeah, I've seen some, uh, I've seen some Fireblade Charger Hammer decks lately. Those decks seem pretty good. I do think if the Anvil Mirror becomes more popular, you probably will have Kalidus in the sideboard. I think that that's probably the big Mirror Breaker. My current sideboard plan is just cut the Thought Seizes, bring in Fatal Pushes, I think. Because you want Blast for their face, maybe, and then push for them. Lantern's not very good in this matchup. Maybe Chandra's Defeat is a little more relevant than Push, because it always hits Mayhem Devil. We technically hit Synthesizer into Blast number four. Don't they get to tap the Anvil into gain six up to six? Maybe I'm misremembering how much life they had, but I thought they were going up to six. But yeah, if you're right, you're right. <laughs> right. Do I push the Epicure? Probably not.
This is like when it's popular, I can see more people playing Yasharn. Yeah, Yasharn's pretty good, I think. Dude, my opponent just loves casting, casting Synthesizer on turn two. And it's working out for them. Maybe I'm wrong, and I, like, I usually wait to cast Synthesizer until turn three. Uh, but may maybe I've been playing it a bit, a bit too scared. I'm going to save this push for Mayhem Devil. I guess I'm going to play my own Mayhem Devil. Again, usually, like, if I have the choice between, like, holding Synthesizer or doing something else impactful, I just take, I do the other thing. Yeah, this is fine. I also have Takanuma to maybe get uh, Mayhem Devil back. If I draw like an untapped land, I'll probably just Takanuma here. Yeah. It's kind of slow, but Mayhem Devil is obviously, you know, the Mirror Breaker. If you play Synthesizer early, it's less likely to be Thought Seized. Yeah, but like Thought Seized is still going to hit another spell, usually, right? I can't imagine that Thought Seize is just like, it hits nothing. And it's just like on turn two, you're pretty likely to hit like a, a two drop that you can't um, cast off the synthesizer. And it's just, then you just zero for one yourself. Um, is why is why I like to wait, that being said. You know, it could be uh, society that's right. I'm wrong. <laughs> You're more able to be second early for value. I mean, yeah, it's it's the, it's the higher upside play for sure. There's no denying that. I like drawing anvil. I can't tell if this is a good mirror match or a bad mirror match. HGA as a mirror breaker. Uh, you wouldn't want to play HGA in this deck because you get to, you have to kill your own cat of, cats and ovens. It's not it's a symmetrical effect. Sack for white. It's probably just you know, undo. Third oven just passes. Okay. Let's just attack first, I guess. And then I'm probably going to go Mayhem Devil, um, Cauldron Familiar, sack the Construct of the Anvil. It doesn't really matter if we play which of these two spells we play first. Karn could be a Mirror Breaker. I mean, Karn's probably great in the matchup, I agree. A Karn, I, I know a lot of people like main deck Karn in this deck because they can search up like, it, they, they play like three synthesizers, three anvils, three ovens, and they play Karn to tutor. But Karn is like a four mana tutor, it's just so freaking slow. I just, I, I really like, and like, and it makes your synthesizers worse if you play synthesizer at all. And I think the deck's way better off without Karn. This is a visual bug, right? This thought sees being in the sideboard. What am I missing? Oh, this fatal push being on the sideboard? I'm confused. Cause my side my sideboard looks like this. My my sideboard is four fatal push, four out by moon, three lantern of the lost, three duress, one gigantha. No, it's not. There's one more card. What am I missing? Oh, the Chandra's defeat. The Chandra's defeat. Sorry, the Chandra's defeat threw me off. Okay, that's right. Sorry. It's like, what is that? So sometimes there is a visual bug there where you will, you will see a card still in your sideboard, but it's in your deck. Uh, it, I don't know if that bug still exists, but it, it used to exist for a long time. It was like seemingly random. Um, and uh, so like you, you would like side in a card, you would side in a card and it visually wouldn't show you that you dragged the card down, but it would be in your deck for the next game and it was sideboarded correctly it was just a visual thing and obviously it's like really unintuitive but it was an important thing to be aware of i think dragon spark reactor is really bad i wouldn't play it 
I know a lot of people are interested in it. I know Doom Wake played it at a Modern League one time. I, I, I think the card's uh, weak. So they, they did bring in Lantern of the Lost. Don't love having to lose my oven, but at least we got a pretty powerful hand. I tried Shokazan Smelter in this deck. Um, I guess I'll read the card. I guess I'll read Shokazan Smelter. <laughs> um, unless someone wants to read it for me. Uh, Mirari, anything with three months? Appreciate you. Reactor plus Zerda companion. Um, but what card are you? What card are you losing for Zerda? Mayhem Devil? You're not going to lose Mayhem, though. <laughs> Mirari, take it three months. Especially when you already get a companion. You already get Gigantha. <laughs> uh, okay, on top. Now, can someone exclamation point Shokuzan Smelter in the chat so I can um, read that one? Maybe I shouldn't have used the treasure first. 2-2, two, two, Goblin Artificer, beginning of your combat turn, pay one, second artifact... Uh, I think two mana two twos in Pioneer are generally bad. Obviously, that's I'm not going to speak for literally every single one in the format, but for the, for the most part, uh, two mana two twos are cards that I recommend staying away from. Uh, the ones that there's just like there's so many shocks in the format, so many Bone Crusher Giants that um, two toughness creatures that cost two mana that give you no value when they die or enter the battlefield. I think for the most part should not be played. And yes, that does include the Jace Friends Prodigy in um, the blue red control back, in my opinion. Um, I could sack a treasure token here. I think I'll leave it in play. Maybe I'll sack a blood token. It's probably fine. Then I think we start off by just sacking the synthesizer. A lot of gas in the tank. I'll cast I'll cast a mayhem double, I suppose. <laughs> Simulation you only play five drops to dodge fatal push. Not sure if you're trying to zing me. But like just specific, there's just there's just so much so many shocks in the format. I I, I do caution you. <laughs> I I know like I, I don't know if you're just saying haha everything dies to removal spike, but I have not had any success. I've had a lot of success beating two mana two twos, and I haven't had much success playing with them so far. Things for my opponent that they've been stuck on two lands this whole game too. They sacked their lantern of the lost. Second anvil is pretty good here. They pack it in. Yeah, that mirror match is. <laughs> a mind grinder. If we do four one predictions over three one, yes we do. So I have felt that the mono red matchups in general are pretty good. Not sure exactly what version Todd's playing though. This definitely seems like Brew. I do have a soft spot for Earthshaker Kenra. That card's really good. Can't block. Take six down to thirteen. Play a second Anvil though. Watsi might be announcing Pioneer on Arena tomorrow. I mean, that would make a lot of sense for them to try to, like, really push to put Pioneer on Arena. Since, like, Pioneer is a Pro Tour format. <laughs> and ideally, they they want the P Arena players to be able to qualify for the Pro Tour. 
it would almost make too much sense. <laughs> it would almost make too much sense for them to do that. Dude, the anvils are such a beating. I also have tri those triple shrapnel blast. So I may be able to just win out of nowhere. Yeah, I could just I could just blast blast blast. <laughs> What's that fifteen? <sighs> Beautiful. So I wanna blast here and then I wanna get a food token off the oven. I guess it doesn't really matter, just kinda of good habits in general. Every day I destroy Todd. <laughs> Every day I just rip Todd apart, I guess. <laughs> this is becoming a trend. Easy sideboarding too, I think. Trim a devil, trim the four thought seas for four push and a defeat. <laughs> yeah, I'm also, I don't know if, any, if he's streaming right now, but if anybody's got a clip of the triple blast, I'd also like to see it. I think we have to mulligan that hand with no black mana. Try to keep this one put back second oven, I guess. Um, I think I'll kill the mage since this is one toughness for my mayhem devils and other one toughness blockers. Yeah, you can you can skip the Urborg if you want to not play the if you want for budget reasons. That's that's a totally okay card to cut. Hmm. Guess I'm gonna play Synthesizer. Hit the only card we can't cast off of it, unfortunately, and then we get kind of greedy. I think the sack here. Try to find push. Find an Epicur. I think I cast. I know I take a damage here, but um, try to block the Kenra at least with it. Crasher. Crasher is kind of a weird one to include. So untap land would be really nice. That's not what we get. And I guess we're just casting Devil, hoping to hold. Frosted, no, yeah, Rampaging Frostodon is not banned. It was banned in Standard, right? Banned in Standard. Kobe with 11 months, appreciate ya. Okay, Epicur can't block. Target's pinged down to 17. Bushwhacker, I think, kills me. I can block here. Sack something to oven, kill here. Die, okay. Game three. Will they ever make Ixalan Steel Pro Tour format? Yes, that, I, 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 you must be joking because they announced that exactly that is coming out. We actually actually played Third Devil over the fourth dispute. Yeah, th th that is a thing that is gonna happen uh, next week, I think. Was Ixalan sealed good? I, I have like the lowest opinion ever on the like, Ixalan block. <laughs> well, I guess to Ixalan's credit, to Ixalan's credit, there were no factions, right? <laughs> I guess there were pirates. Alright, Mulligan again. Keep this one. Let's put back the Shrapnel Blast, I think. Pirate faction, dino faction, yeah, sounds sounds about right. I don't know if those oh, we we can maybe not ramble about factions for an hour again. Um, do I want to sack this blood token? I 
think I'm gonna actually hold it here. Kind of flooded. I kind of want to loot away the den. I, it's also like pretty bad if um. I'm oh, sorry, it's pretty bad if I flood out the thing to do next turn. Okay, it's a pretty good draw. I think we just pass here. Gosslot, I think with the nine months, appreciate you. Bushwhacker. Really not bad. Take two down to 12. Oven's pretty good with my anvil. So I think I block, sack, make a food token, and then I gain three life on my turn probably. Trigger the anvil. Put the 5-5 five five in my hand. <laughs> the, I think we've won like three games on Giganta so far, right? I think it might be a fourth. Three, three, burning tree. Say that five times fast. Kind of greedy, but I think I like casting synthesizer. Super rewarded for the greed. I think I was blast the den. Sack the extra food. Double block swift spear. Seems pretty good too. You can buy x full set for 10 ticks. That's too much. <laughs> Way too much. Get it ripped off spinning 10 tickets on a full set. If I play the second sword because Giganta better than Luris, uh, no. Alright, two foods for me. Oh wait, this is only four damage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought this was roast or I guess, I don't know. I don't know what I thought. <laughs> Dude, I wasn't thinking. Cause I don't want to bring back the cat and get it exiled without having the ovens up. Yeah, part of our daily routine is just to like destroy Todd in the match of magic. Maybe not. My cat oven one more time. I guess so. I think the last card's a burn spell though. Yeah, they've got the red cap. But the cat oven's just not that good with this uh, Frostodon in play. Maybe I should have sacked the last food for life though. Well then, that's probably good enough. Right. <laughs> Tough stuff. What's the XL text on Kimono? Uh, if it's dealt damage, it gets XL instead. All right, so we're currently eight and one on the day with red black. Eight and one on the day with red black. Got a trophy last league, lost match one of this league to Lotus Field. 
See if we can battle back and uh, get a 5-0 maybe. My prediction for 4-1 is live. We're on the draw for game three. And we'll keep this. I think the last time we played this deck, we were 8-2. and two. I could be misremembering. It was a couple weeks ago. But yeah, the, the red-black deck has just continued to really be impressive. Although, it looks like we have final boss, Lotus Field. Seeing Botanical Sanctum, expecting Lotus Field. I'll try to get maybe one extra damage with the cat here. Yeah, there was a prediction. Sorry if it didn't come up. It can sometimes be a little finicky. So we do have a lot of sideboard cards for this matchup. We have got three Alpine Moons, uh, three Duresses. I watch Utah. Any way you could do deck text in them? Any way I could do deck text in the YouTube content? No, not really. I don't know. Like a lot, a lot of people ask me these kind of questions. Like, you know, they, like they they want me to be like more available after the stream. But I'm like I'm like alive for five or six hours a day answering questions. It's just too much for me to also, like, spend my after-stream time answering more questions and stuff. It's the limits. How much does turn to recipes for the deck? I mean, Resting Piece only shuts off Cat Oven and then, I guess, Implement Trigger. A Resting Piece is good, but it's it's not like, it's not like turn two, lose the game or anything. Okay, turn five combo deck, apparently. Blast you down to nine. Cat oven you down to eight. I think we're gonna be a little slow, short here, especially because we didn't draw anything here. Drew a deadly dispute though. Basic of the, the gifted sub is nice of you. Um, so we need to draw another shrapnel blast or thought seize. Oh. Didn't do either of those things. Oh. We do have lethal next turn. But we're probably dead. It's like, I mean, like Lotus Field basically always kills you on turn five. Oh, I guess they didn't have Thespian stage. I guess they didn't have Thespian stage. Maybe they'll just brick. Maybe they'll just brick and then I will have to issue an official YouTube apology apologizing for saying the Lotus Field deck is too good. In my defense, they, they keep killing me on turn five, all right? <laughs> but they might fizzle here. This year is obviously a good start for them. Okay, this is plus two mana. They can't quite cast Ultimatum. Yeah, I I I know MTG Goldfish calls this deck hidden strings. <laughs> I really I really disagree with that naming convention. <laughs> they still can't ultimate him, right? Oh, no, they can. Or is it triple black? Yeah, it's not triple black. Let's see. If if, wait, if they get if they get um. Peer into the abyss? Is that round up or down? Airborne killed me? Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, we're dead. But on turn five, though. Turn five is okay, huh? <laughs> Gonna bring in the moons, the duresses. Those few makes back by armor matter. I thought they tapped the green land for black ones. Maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe I'm misremembering. Oh, oops, sorry. Meant to cut another dispute. Is it ever right to give them omniscience? Uh, no, I mean, any the, the thing about that pile there is any two cards kill you. Any two cards kill you. Don't need to sweat it too much. How do they kill you those two tutors? So one of them tutors three cards, one of them tutors one card gets three mana. So they're they're they there's just a million ways to kill you. They can cast another ultimatum. 
there's just yeah they, they there's millions of ways to kill you there i know <laughs> i don't necessarily want to i'm not sure exactly what four cards they grab but they have four cards five mana floating it's like they can easily cast another ultimatum just not that tricky really uh, I think I'll take the Maze Mind Tome. It's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of Mayhem Devils, huh? Okay, casting this. Again, you usually want to wait on Alpine Moon until after they, um, until after they play their Lotus Field. Otherwise, if you wait the moon, you just let them play it untapped and then answer your out by moon. So sack the synthesizer, get the anvil train rolling. They do have blast zone, blast zone, and Oda War both can be really slow to stop the moon here. Second Lotus Field is a problem. Potentially, there is currently Vizier, Odawara, Blast Zone, Hidden Strings, two mystery cards. <laughs> Should have named Lotus Cobra. <laughs> hmm. We also have my opponent dead next turn, I'm pretty sure. So I think we're likely to win this game. Yeah, Blessing's going to be a little too slow. Okay, game three on the draw. I'd love to finish 9-1 of the day with red-black. <sighs> I don't think we get mulligan this. We don't have an Alpine Moon. We have we do just have a Thought Season, a reasonable curve. It's also like, I've talked about this a bunch. It's really hard. You can't like mulligan for Alpine Moon as your plan because they have so many answers to it. If you just have a slow hand but you have a moon, it's not good enough to win, usually. Uh, I think we'll take the strings over the recovery. So they've got a lot of mana in this hand, obviously, and then no real payoff yet. Certainly a hand that's, I think, pretty good against ours. Sylvan Scrying, I imagine they find Beseju. Yeah, they do find Beseju. It's my favorite color in Magic, and what color do you play most of the decks? I mean, uh, blue and blue, I would imagine, overall. They're gonna besage you this? They're not. So they're gonna spend this next turn Thespian staging. So I think I should just Mayhem Devil here. It's gonna be really unlikely they kill us here. <laughs> but you know, you know how this deck is. Yeah, really unlikely though. Okay, we know that this hits the Balagud recovery. They've got no other um, spell in their hand at the time of making this comment. Do I think I discard the Thought Seize. So it doesn't seem very likely it's gonna really do anything for me this game at this point. So we put our opponent for seven or three down to 14. We can go Anvil, sack the Blood Token next turn. Maybe it's better to sack the Construct because this is a damage next turn, this is a damage. They top deck literally the best possible card, I think. Literally the best possible. Did they scry? They didn't even scry. Yeah, I think it's better to sack the Construct. Because both Construct and Blood Token represent a damage, but Blood Token digs me for another card, potentially. They may besage you me if they besage you me. There's not much we can do about it. So I guess the decision point now is, do I sack the Blood Token, discard the Oven? I'm currently attacking my opponent for 5 down to 7. I technically have 3 more damage. I think I don't. Now I'll discard the oven. It's 
Somehow they bricked really hard after the pour over the pages. Um, dead to a lot of top decks though. And they've got two looks because the maze went home. Oh, I also don't have lethal next turn. Without drawing anything. It's kind of embarrassing to not have lethal. <laughs> They're not like immediately slamming pour over the pages. Just find another shimmer. We have a lot of top decks that kill them. If we draw, <laughs> we can find one here. They are untapping Maze Mind Tome with Vizier. Wow, that's pretty sick. Although they might actually die. Exile, okay, this is Exile, not Sacrifice. Okay, I thought this may trigger the Mayhem Devil. <laughs> Dotsies, copy one million. I didn't draw an out. Put them to a humble one life. It's my fifth discard spell played this game. Go, what'd you get that go? Is Necromantia a playable separate card? There's like nothing good to name with Necromantia. It's, it's, it's just, they just have a lot of redundancy and their tutors and their mana's cards. If you get Cap Oven, I would have Lethal. Yeah, but then I wouldn't have gotten to Thoughtseize, um, whatever it was I thought, the Hidden Strings, which I don't know how relevant that is, but I think ca like casting the Thoughtseize after they got to draw cards seemed way more relevant to me. Um, I don't know. What's the one red card? Uh, Shrapnel Blast is the, is I think the card you're talking about. Did you gain four life? Two new cards in their hand now. Maze of Tome looked great this game. I've never, I've never seen it look this good. They get Oda War with Maze by Tome. Don't you dare bounce my Gigantha. <laughs> Packrat versus them? I don't know if you're joking. Packrat is not playable in Pioneer and not good against this in this matchup. <laughs> Gigantha actually won the game. <laughs> okay, okay. So yesterday, yesterday I was playing the Mono Red Fires deck. I spent the entire stream complaining about Gigantha. But, or complaining about Lotus Field, but I just simply wasn't playing Gigantha. I simply wasn't playing Gigantha. Gigantha is how you beat the deck. I understand now. I issue an official YouTube apology. An official, an official apology to all the Lotus Field players. Yesterday, I'm sure all the Lotus Field players must have been spamming in the chat. Spike! Spike! Gigantha beats us every time. You don't need to ban the deck. And I just, I just didn't listen. I just didn't listen. <laughs> um, that is going to be the end of today's stream. I think we're going to raid Reed, who is playing some blue red Merktide and modern. I'm going to try to play some modern tomorrow. Maybe I'm also maybe going to work on the blue red dragons deck in Pioneer. So one or one or the other. Uh, before we go, I do want to thank. Our, yeah, I need to pay out the believers too. I do also want to need to thank our uh, sponsor, NordVPN. You can go to nordvpn.com slash spike and get an awesome deal on a VPN service. Uh, it's a really good idea to be using a VPN if you're using the internet ever, which I imagine some of you guys in the chat are. Uh, it can protect your internet privacy, stop companies from stealing your data, encrypt your, encrypt your data with a very good technology that I, 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 they use the same technology I think for the uh, NordPass software too that I use which is a software, a password management software. Really recommend NordVPN. Thank you, Nord, for sponsoring the stream. Thank you, Reed, for streaming some modern, carrying the category. And I will see you guys tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah, I wanna play some modern, but I wanna try to find something sweet to play, hopefully.